If you would like to access talkability for the visually impaired please visit our Facebook page. Re ka thola moputso o mongata go tswa dipapading. Emeng ya melemo e tswang dipapading. Ke misifa e matla, le pelo e phelang hantle. Ha o wele moya, matshunyo ao a ludim. Le boitshopo ba o bolefatse. Mohlomong ke nako ya hore o nke karolo o adaptive sports. Adaptive sports di bohlokwa jwalo ka dipapadi tse ding le tse ding. Ka ntle le ho uruta ketolopelo, tsebo ya bophelo, tshebisano moho le babang. Dipapadi tsena di dumela batho ba bokua ba nke karolo dipapadi tse tlwaeleleng. Ka jeno re hlahloba melemo e re ifuang ke ho nka karolo ka mafolofolo. Bongata ba nako sena ha se bontswe sechabeng. Today we have a keen adventurist in studio, Jesse Potter. Welcome to Talkability, Jesse. Thank you so much. You have always participated in some type of activity or sports before your injury. What did you like then and uh, what did you do? Um, I used to be active before my, my accident, but not as active as I am now, actually. Okay. Um, I just used to go to, to gym and that's basically my, me being active back then. And wh what's the difference now? The difference now is I actually challenge myself to do new things and to try different things, completely different than what I've ever done in my whole life. Um, I must say, after the accident, there was no motivation. Um, family actually pushed me into doing something and being more active. And how long did that process take for you? So after I got out of rehab, I think it took about six months. Well, I actually, I just called my brother and asked him for a glass of water. And he came into the room and he said, um, they taught you how to do this in rehab. You know how to get into your chair. You know how to do this yourself. So do it. So it got to a point where your family was not playing along anymore. Yes. They're like, you know, yeah, there was you're no, either going to do it for yourself or you're not going to get it. Yeah, I don't feel sorry for you. Um, you're in this situation now, but you need to embrace it now. You need to move forward with your life. And, and that moment alone changed your life. Yes, I must have actually transferred into my chair. And I completely missed my chair and I ended up on the floor. <laughs> so I called my brother again. And he came into the room and I said, well, can you please help me into my chair? So he's like, they taught you how to do this in rehab, so do it. Um, I actually sat there on the floor crying for, I think, almost an hour before I decided for myself, okay, well, this is the end of it. You're either going to die in this bed or you're going to just accept what happened to you and move forward. Well, uh, I must say the attitude that your, that your brother adopted is one of the best because you know what, in any human nature, when there's trouble, you will end up acting, eh? Yes, no, definitely, definitely. So um, at least I acted in a good way and by moving forward. For me, family is it's the biggest, biggest thing in life. And for you, the person that you were before your accident and the person that you became after your accident, uh, what, what, were the, what were the differences? Um, so when I was, when I could still walk and all of those things, if I have to look at myself today, back then, I wasn't a nice, nice person at all. So actually me, me sitting in a wheelchair today has humbled me um, because, I mean, I could do everything for myself. And now by me being humbled, I have to ask, if I can't do something, I need to ask for help. Uh, even, even though I still want to do everything myself, there's, I can't do everything. Yeah. So I still need to ask, listen, can you please help me? Can you please help me get a cup out of the top shelf of the cupboard? Yes. And, but then over time, everything else changed. You started becoming more active. You started doing things for yourself. You started getting involved in sports. Mm. How did that all happen for you? Uh, I actually got invited to just go watch <laughs> wheelchair rugby. And it was actually by a friend of mine who was also in an accident and he plays for Wheelchair Rugby South Africa. And he invited me to just go watch them, them train and all of that. And they said, okay, well, here's an extra chair, jump in it and see. Hmm. And that, that completely changed my whole look onto, into sports and to being active and doing stuff. <laughs> Jumping into a, a rugby chair, is, it's absolutely fun because it's, never, it's something I've never done in my whole life before. And that moment when I actually started pushing and you, you crash into the, the other players, it's, it's awesome. Plus the wheelchairs look so massive. They, yes, they're yeah. like some type of monsters mm. trying to kill someone. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> they, they, they're off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess then the glass of water that you ended up getting for yourself was more than just a glass of water. Yes, I must say that, that glass of water was a big turning point from seeing the glass 
half empty to seeing the glass half full. Definitely. Harry and Kwana who Jesse Hai, Rilo Monahana, the girlfriend of Haishan. I'm Jesse Liberta. I'm 23 years old. I was in a car accident when I was 17 on my way to the gym. And on impact, my aorta got ripped off of my heart, which left me a paraplegic. And I had to go through rehab and all of that to settle back into normal life. Now, today, five years later, if I look back at the rehab, it was literally all for the good because today I can do everything you can do except for walk. I started adaptive sports by a friend that invited me to go to wheelchair rugby. I didn't know what to expect and what to think, but I absolutely fell in love with it because it's the only place I can go to get all my frustrations out and actually enjoy myself by just being me. You, you don't have to pretend to be anyone that you're not because everyone there is in the same situation as what you are. So adaptive sports is any type of sport that you can do if you have a disability. Adaptive sports have, has changed my life completely. It makes me, it make, made me who I am today. Me as a person, I've learned to adapt to every situation. It doesn't help you complain about the small things because then the big things are even going to be so much bigger in your life. Because yes, you might have a challenge in your life, but there's always a way to overcome it. That was some inspiration now stuff like proper stuff how do you even lift yourself that high i don't think i'd be able to do it <laughs> <laughs> and where do you get all that strength well I, I mean using your arms every every day and hitting the gym five o'clock in the mornings i guess so one of the things you've done a lot in your life was to strengthen your upper body yes definitely definitely even when i could still walk um it was still going to gym every morning and that routine just carried on into, like, I guess, my new life. And I see that you, you also play uh, wheelchair rugby, like you mentioned before, and you say it actually helps you uh, relieve some of your frustrations. Uh, is that something you get with contact sports when you are involved in contact sports, or you also get it with the other adaptive sports you are involved in? Um, my frustrations and stuff, mostly contact sports. Um, the other sports, are more, like scuba diving, is that calms you completely. Okay. Like getting into the water, it's you're free. Your your wheelchair is on, on the surface and you're under the water with able bodied people and you just one of them. You're just the same. You just dive. And this is all part of the adaptive sports program. Yes. It's it's part of Adaptive yes. Sports Fund, yes. So and, and 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 what more do they have that you still think you would like to try out? Well, we're actually having a go kart day on the fourteenth which is also adapted, so that is, that, that is going to be amazing. I'll definitely be watching the space for you. Har khutla, retro bua hao tso la pele ka jesi li di sports sa di etang tse adaptive. Hape, le me wa hai, otla be ale mona hotla bua le ron. Arrefe, tse di nta di taba, tse lo rem shumano na ka na wa rapate la tso. Kinza kipua li jesi mona, kabo pilo bae bo khati sang ba adaptive sports. Hape joale, le me wa hae liena, ose ali teing mona hotla bua le rona. Ke me elo rengui kotla sifuwa ibilo omo tlotlo ha holo, kamo rawa hae. Welcome to the show, Luis. Thank you, Raina. Yes. Um, what is so interesting about your son? What is it that you appreciate so much about him? <laughs> you know, I think the ability for him to just live life to its fullest without any remorse, without looking back and feeling sorry for himself, but grabbing every opportunity that's thrown his way and making a success of it. And his accident uh, brought a lot of things back to your life and put a lot of things into perspective. Uh, what lessons came with that for you as a mother? Yo, it, the accident shook us all. It didn't just change his life, but it also changed our lives drastically in a matter of a phone call. When Jesse came out of rehab, we didn't expect how our lives will change. And they don't prepare you for that either. And it was every day just 
taking a new step. It's like having a new baby, not knowing what to expect and just adapt to it, just adapt to life, finding a new normal because the normal you had isn't the same anymore and just fit into his life as well. But also make sure that he is acting as normal as any of us. How were you then able to make a turnaround yourselves to say, this is how we're going to treat this whole situation? You have to be tough. You have to, you have to allow him to live by himself. You cannot help him all the time because you cannot be with him 24 hours a day. I had to go back to work. So he would, there would be times where he would be by himself and helping him is not helping him. Yes. Assisting him with everything and every time he asks for you to do something isn't assisting him because he, he learned in rehab what to do and how to approach life. And he, he must learn to do it by himself as well. So you need, as a mother, step back. As much as you want to help him, it is to step back and say, it's your turn. You need to do this by yourself because I cannot be there every day. And uh, clearly you are a mother of tough love. Uh, even before <laughs> Jesse's accident, uh, there was an incident where he, he, he stole your laptop, and, but you made sure he got the punishment that he deserved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I actually took him to the police station and had him arrested for theft. And um, they cuffed him and they locked him up. Luckily, he was still of a young age, so they couldn't keep him. They had to release him into my custody. But we, had to, we took him the full, the full extent of the law. The next day, I went to withdraw the case without him knowing it. But we still went to court. Yes. And um, we put him through that entire phase because he had to learn his lesson. At that moment, I didn't think that my mom actually did it because she loved me, because I thought she hated me, actually. <laughs> that, that's the truth. And today, if I look back at it, um, that is absolutely the best thing my mom, has, my mom could ever do for me, was that day when she told me, get into the car, we're going to the police station. That was the, the Oh, best you actually thing. took yourself <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, my mom actually took me in there, and um, they said, okay, well, come. They need to make decisions for themselves and also that there's consequences for their actions, that they cannot, there isn't always somebody that can bail them out when they're in trouble. Sometimes they have to face the music themselves. And you know, Louise, um, mothers are the most worrisome people in the world. And here's Jesse you now scuba diving, uh, doing all these adventurous things that are so scary now. Uh, Apart from being proud of him, how, how much do you worry about him, though, getting involved in all of these activities? Um, I think the scuba diving is the worst because <laughs> although he's very confident and he loves it to bits, um, anything can, can happen to me. It's, to me, it's the most dangerous part of all the sports he's done so far. I know they've got buddies. I know they're very cautious in everything, very safety conscious, but still... That is one of the, the parts that, that worries me. I mean, it can be a shock. Do you ever want to sometimes feel like discouraging some of these ideas? I sometimes do, but I keep it to myself. Motomung elo ring liena, orata adventure haholo, kishavani, liena ule a kenel and tutanata adaptive spot, ili quadrapligi. I've always been an active uh, person playing sports. Um, I used to play sports from soccer, cross country, swimming, tennis, um, volleyball, you name it. Libi, it's okay, Chabani Minga. I'm a quadriplegic. I was involved in a car accident in June 2003, my first year of varsity. Currently, I play rugby for, um, I play wheelchair rugby for Mandeville. I first got um, involved with the sports um, in like 2009. I've participated in um, a number of different uh, sports. So I've done road races, uh, kayaking, scuba diving, golf, and canopy tours. When I tell people that I play all these different sports, um, they ask me a lot of questions like how I got into the sports, how I play wheelchair rugby, how I can I still swim because I'm on a wheelchair. Um, <laughs> it's actually quite funny. I find that um, showing them pictures and videos um, of my playing sports helps them understand quicker because, especially when I say I play rugby, they think it's 
actual rugby on a grass on grass but i said no it's on like an indoor um basketball courts and i show them exactly how to do it playing sports has kept me very very active um, and it's allowed me to meet um, a lot of different people um, inspiring people it, it just really helps a lot uh, i see here on the inset uh, chabani actually uh plays wheelchair rugby as well, but he's a quadriplegic. Are there different classes for this uh, sport or what's happening there? Please explain. Uh, yes, it's actually called quad rugby. So if you, you have to have three or more limbs that are affected by your disability. So at the moment, I do not qualify to play national wheelchair rugby, but I still go there and I play friendlies and I enjoy training with them and being a part of it because it's a big part of me. Have as you well. looked into uh, sports, types of sports which you could play professionally within the adaptive sports uh, arena? I have looked at it, but all of them have too little contact for my liking. Sure. And maybe then you should just start, uh, uh, you're, you're paraplegic, you must start a para sports uh, where you have a para rugby thing <laughs> and then get it registered and then other paras would join it. Eh? Yeah, I think that, that would actually be a great idea to try yeah. something like that. Okay. There's a huge social aspect of actually participating in, in these events or engaging in, with the other uh, quadriplegics or paraplegics playing the different types of sports. Um, yes, I mean, you, you meet new people and people, I mean, people actually accept you for who you are. They don't look down on you, are you different? They, they, don't, they don't see your disability, they see a person. And it, it shows that adaptive sport is growing in South Africa. Right now, it's, it's, it's actually very small, but it's growing mm -hmm. because they're starting to have more events, more people are starting to know about it. It's really doing a lot. Hari Kuta Papato, Retobuali Jeff Yates, Kia Nahe Atorujuizang Hori, Adaptive Sports, Isibiza Joa. Rinse Rubua Monaka Adaptive Sports Le Adventure. Ibile Heka Shekore Le Thono Loha Holo Hobane Rina Le Omu Mwaba Tupelu Ring Baile Babula Adaptive Sports Fund Eli Nyena Jeff. Welcome to the studio Jeff. Thank you. Yes. What were the reasons behind opening the Adaptive Sports Fund? In the beginning I got involved with sports and I saw the value that it added to my life. And I was fortunate enough to try various different sporting activities and I thought maybe there's an opportunity to create a foundation where we could be a sort of like have all sports sit under one umbrella and offer these sports to different, different able people and let them have the same experience that I was fortunate enough to, to experience. I mean, first and foremost, it's about fun. There's so many different aspects of sport that people can take away from, you know. Um, you know, it's a lot of the people are, are not in the best physical shape. So sport uh, gives that opportunity to people to get stronger, to transfer themselves in and out of the wheelchair. But there's a big community around adaptive sports, different members that have gone through similar tragic events in their own lives and you get to speak to them and you get to try and figure it out with them, take a lot of their learnings that they've had and just better your life as a whole. My only issue with it is that it's so much of a grabbing sport, you know, by that I mean hands are always the most important part of it. You know, and I wanted to find out, was it actually developed to focus more on para and quadriplegic persons as primarily, or does it also include other disabilities? Well, I mean, my, my area of expertise obviously is with spinal cord injury, because that's obviously something I, um, myself, uh, with my car accident, so, and I, and I knew the limitations that I had, that other people would have with, within trying to develop adaptive sports. So at this stage, we're only really focusing on mobility impairment, um, first and foremost, but we have had an adaptive diver that's, that's blind. Um, but we would love to work with, you know, like yourself and figure out a way of how to go about adapting different sports that, that you wanted to get involved with, because it's really is just an adapted, an adaptation that, uh, that allow you to get involved with different sporting. Oh, also the formulation always comes with, um, the involvement and, and, and also mm. the research and trying to understand the different disabilities and see how you can be able to assist them to actually make all of that happen. Exactly, 100%, yeah. Mm. I guess I'll give you a call soon. Absolutely. Because I'd love to we do some can... climbing, you know, like I, one of the things, I, I'm scared of heights, but that I'd like to do. I'd like to do some rock climbing. 
Well, that's the thing. There, there, there is always a way around. Um, there, we'll find a way as well. And uh, I think that's what's important about the organization. You know, if someone wants to do horse riding or any sort of adapted sports that they previously did, they must reach out to us and, and get in contact with us. And we, we've got a, a large network of people that are willing to help and find ways of, of doing things. I think we need more publicity around um, adaptive sports. I don't think it's out there. I love bragging, always taking videos when Jesse is busy with her because it's, it's just so amazing to see what they are able to do. Being called disabled, which to me is a total farce, because they're able to do more things than what I can do. And people need to, the, 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 need to know about this. People need to see what can be done by the so-called people with a disability. I don't see a lot of female participants. What, what do you think is causing that, where females just are not coming forward? Well, I mean, you say that, but on our first wakeboarding day um, in 2017, we um, had a, a lady by the name of Chanel who absolutely killed all the guys. She was up first. She was just having the best time out there. Um, she also adapted very um, good to the adaptive go-karting, you know, drifting the car around the corners and things like that. So we definitely have a, a following of, of, of a few female athletes. And for people to be involved uh, in, 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 in assisting or developing the sports, volunteer or partake, where, where can we go? Um, adaptive Sports Fund is on all the social media platforms um, under Adaptive Sports Fund. There's also a website, um, adaptivesportsfund.org, where they can send us an email if they want to get involved from a financial point of view or from a volunteer perspective, or if there's any athletes and aspiring athletes out there that want to get involved and they don't, don't know how to go about it or, or what sports they want to partake to, you know, maybe take up as a career, they can get in contact with me. There's just not enough sporting associations out there, like clubs. I mean, Mandeville's uh, a wonderful club, but they've, they, do, they too have their limitations in yes. terms of the, what they can offer. And I think that's where Adaptive Sports Fund comes in, is that we can be a centralized hub for all adaptive sports that have information and uh, you know, um, prices on a lot of the equipment that you might need. Um, through our, our events or our demo days, um, we can get the guys to come experience various sports before they go spend all that costly money or, or before they go and find the sponsorships to try and get them involved with a particular sport. Yeah. Am I right? Well, normally with like demo days, we actually do not pay for it. Um, the ASF sponsors everyone that participates in it. And then if you choose to pursue this sport, um, yes, there, there are costs involved to it, but there's also ways to get sponsors. and. Oh. Talk to people, ask them, listen, this is my dream. It is very difficult to get sp sponsors because the equipment is so costly. It's mostly developed in the US or overseas where now you've got the Rand dollar that oh, comes yeah. into account. But there are ways around that. And like, like we've developed four snow skis in AfriSki, which we um, built. And we managed to build them under 15,000 Rand a ski. Where if you go and buy them overseas, they can be in excess of, of 80,000 Rand. The motto says, no limits, just life. Um, you were just trying to say to everyone, come, let's live. Yeah, let's just have fun. I must say, guys, I've enjoyed the conversation. I think for myself as well, I've learned a lot. And Jeff, you've opened my eyes to certain things. And now you've made me believe that the rock climbing idea might just work sometime in the future. Thank you very much for coming to the show. Luna Ban Tubisu, Retegetotola Pileri Will Luna, Kwana Ho Social Media. Tabatana Takajeku, Deepaka Hor, Haunan to Eka Tibel Lambo Pelo Bao, Kante, Likele Loya Hao. Ishile, Kajeku Lena Labons or Ntongulung, Ekaeta. Libito Kirena Muloi and we talk ability. <laughs>